Hello, my name is Minna Gilligan. I'm an artist based here in Melbourne and I'm here today coming to you from my home studio again to bring you another at home art workshop. So today's activity is going to be still life drawing and I'm going to cover, you know, gathering items from around the home to form a still life scene as well as some drawing exercises that you can then work with uh, from that still life scene. So we'll get started and I look forward to seeing what you all create. So in regards to materials, what you will need, some blank paper, so I've got my trusty sketchbook, you could have any size of paper that you feel comfortable working with. You also need some drawing implements, so for me I've chosen coloured pencils as my practice is quite vibrant as are the objects I'm going to be drawing from. Uh, but you could choose any drawing implement that you like, so textures, uh, markers, charcoal, uh, you know, pens, any, any drawing implement that you're comfortable with. Then obviously you will need some objects from around the house to create your still life setup. So the things you need to think about when setting up your still life scene. Firstly, I've just sort of unified the whole scene by using this fabric as a backdrop. I've propped it up there with some cardboard boxes behind it. Then I've sort of gathered all my objects and I thought a little bit about how to create depth, you know, in this scene. So you can create depth by thinking about foreground, middle ground and background and also by sort of thinking about the scale of your objects and arranging them, you know, as such. So larger objects, larger and taller objects could be at the back and then as you sort of work around to the front you can have some smaller objects, you know, here just so they don't get lost. The other thing is to have sort of a variety of textures, so some nice kind of, um, you know, fluffy textures with these feathers. I've got some shiny sort of textures here with these plastic pieces and then I've got your, you know, um, lovely kind of dimpled fruit here as well. The other thing to note as well with this setup is that I've kind of used this vine to kind of create a bit of a sense of unity between all the objects. So something like that that can kind of be winding through gives a, a sort of, again, an idea of togetherness with the objects, sort of extends the scene and, and gives the objects a relationship to each other. So they're the kind of things that I would think about when sort of setting up my objects for a still life scene as this is. So to begin, I'm going to do a short warm-up exercise and that exercise is called Blind Contour Drawing. You may have heard of it before. So what you do is you'll be looking at the objects and then drawing without looking at the paper. So it's just a way to kind of warm up to get a feel for the scene you're going to be drawing. And the idea as well is to not lift your pencil off the paper. So it's really about just sort of going along, you know, your hands sort of getting used to the, you know, actions of drawing, warming up and following the lines, the contours of the objects in which you're looking at. So I've got a lot of circular shapes here, just sort of rambling along. I'm trying not to look at my paper, it's a very automatic thing to do. And so once you've done a blind contour drawing, you know, you have a bit of an understanding of the composition, of how things are kind of relating to each other. And you'll have what looks like quite a scribbly sort of drawing, but I guarantee you that it will be of use to you. Just serving as an initial kind of way to get a feel for things. There you have it, a blind contour drawing. Very easy, quick exercise to do to warm up and it just gives you a feel for the scene and for what you'll then sort of be studying in a, you know, in a more kind of uh, sustained way later on. So for me, I'm gonna now sort of begin a more prolonged kind of study of this still life. So the way in which I would sort of start would be to just identify the main shapes in the composition here 
and simplify those shapes you know so the fruits I'm going to you know make into circles and I'll just block in sections in a light color so I can kind of go back and, and work with it very important when you're drawing to be looking at the object or set of objects in which you are studying because sometimes it can be very easy to sort of be you know drawing um, what you kind of think you know rather than what you are actually seeing it's very easy for our brains to kind of fill in fill in the gaps so I'm just popping in sort of basic shapes using a light colored pencil and I'm focusing on looking at the scene. Remember it's okay if things aren't perfect. Proportionately, you know, I'm not the greatest of drawers, but it's good to sort of be able to, you know, look and to translate. And I think drawing is largely about about translating you know and and having your own kind of mind's eye reading what it is you're seeing rather than you know just creating copies of things to me doesn't really appeal to me for me I like to sort of think that what I'm creating you know has some sort of uh, reading upon you know who I am and how I've kind of interpreted you know the scene So now I'm going to go back in with some colour and I'll consider, you know, don't have a huge range of pencils here, but I will kind of consider some darker sort of sections. So see where the, the light is coming from the right side here and then it's sort of hitting to the right. So that means that, you know, things that are kind of further away from that light source are going to have more shadow and darker kind of tonal structure on them. Good thing to remember too is that it's not often that objects are made up of just one singular color. So for example the apples have little flecks of sort of yellow amongst them. So I'm just popping that in as well. It's okay with a drawing to be able to see sort of some of your under drawings, you know some of the process kind of parts. Because I think it's good to be able to sort of you know, acknowledge that drawing is, is a process and it's about building things up. It's not necessarily about sort of having something that's perfectly slick all the time. You know, I look at drawing as an exercise, not necessarily as something that, uh, you know, demands perfection each time you sort of attempt it. Proportionately for me, you know, um, I'm not the greatest sort of uh, example of having a good quite a good understanding of, of proportion but I do like to sort of sometimes think you know when you're sort of looking at, at what you're drawing it's good to be able to compare you know sizes to the other objects in which you can see and that can be a little bit you know easier then to sort of figure out proportion wise how things are kind of lining up against each each object it's also important to make note of any kind of shadows that are that are prominent. You can add those in. It can kind of help round things out as well. Sketching from observation, it's always is so important to just keep looking at your subject. Don't get distracted by, you know, zoning in on, on one thing that you're sort of not entirely happy with. It's always good to just look back at what you're referencing and to work from there rather than sort of you know focusing too much on the paper you should always be looking looking at what you're drawing So now you've finished your drawing and you can see uh, mine here, it's sort of a, a quite a loose sort of sketch based representation of the still life scene. You can revisit your still life scene as many times as you like. 
So, you know, you could set parameters around your drawings, so perhaps time limits or, you know, parameters around different materials, things like that. And, you know, this time, um, I think the key things to remember with this exercise are to begin with a warm-up, so something like a blind contour drawing, and then move on to the more sustained kind of representational, uh, you know, drawing of, of the still life setup. So remembering things like putting down sort of basic shapes of what you're kind of seeing, breaking them down into basic shapes, then starting to sort of slowly build up some tonal structure, you know, using your lamp to differentiate where the darks and the lights are. And then you'll sort of start to, to get a rounder kind of representation of the scene that you're sort of looking at. So I hope you enjoyed today and I look forward to seeing you again next time for some more at-home art activities. Thank you.